The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Some Pharisees came to Jesus and said, Go away, leave the area, because Herod wants to kill you. Jesus replied, Go and tell that fox. Behold, I cast out demons and I perform healings today and tomorrow, and on the third day I accomplish my purpose. Yet I must continue on my way today, tomorrow, and the following day, for it is impossible for a pro that a prophet should die outside of Jerusalem. <coughs> Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you kill the prophets and stone those sent to you. How many times I yearned to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you were unwilling. Behold, your house will be abandoned, but I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Things are not always what they seem to be. And really in both light and darkness, goodness and evil. It's even odd to say I don't think we know. I mean, I know we don't know the reality and the power of the divine. That's not a complaint. It's just a reality in our limited human understanding and condition. I've said it before, it seems to fit here to say again that Christianity, it's either all true or none of it's true. Which way do you want to go? I think it's all true. I mean, who can make this up, right? So both readings today, the first reading much more directly, but the gospel as well, talk about warfare, talk about the powers of darkness. It can be a very complex subject, and really kind of is. And it's an increasingly engaging topic today because more and more people want to know about it. That was not the case 30 or 40 or more years ago. I don't believe there's more evil in the world now than there was before. But in these modern times with internet and, and uh, the uh, information highway technology and all that, uh, media, TV, uh, screens, videos, and all of that, it's anywhere and everywhere. And I think uh, a certain segment of people find it very fearful or fear-creating. Others find it simply curious. Some people find it fun. Some people want to know about it and see what they might get out of it. Bad idea. don't know, I do know that we're not aware of the powers of God, the powers of grace, the powers of healing, the power of redemption, which has already taken place, you see. If I recall correctly, Paul is in prison at the time he writes the letter to the Ephesians, and he alludes to that, for I am in chains, an ambassador for Christ. Paul knows warfare. Any mature Christian moving toward God will know warfare. Any mature Christian or lukewarm Christian who wakes up and says, you know, I got to fly straight, and they move away from a manner of life to a more moral or Christ-driven life, that person's going to know warfare. The people who live in indifference or apathy or just humming along, practicing religion because, well, it's there to practice, the devil's not going to bother that person because they're lukewarm. Is it in the book of Revelation or the letters uh, to the cities, Laodicea, the name of that city, 
Um, I spit you out of my mouth, for you are neither hot nor cold. You're lukewarm. Be hot or cold, presumably hot, in the spirit. Paul talks about the armor of God. Uh, these particular here, I don't necessarily go through the whole reading, but, um, oh, where is it? It's hard to see there. Uh, faith, of course, righteousness, the feet of the gospel, the shoes of the gospel, as it's called. Faith is a shield, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. Should we be afraid of the devil? No. Should, be aware, should we be aware? Absolutely. The devil loves our fear. The devil loves our attention. The devil presents himself as all-powerful. But remember, the devil is the liar and the deceiver. If you find yourself in, in chaos and confusion and disorder, the devil's probably somewhere there. The devil loves our weaknesses because they, they are those places where he can most easily ploy us. And we think, oh God, just another bad day. Sometimes warfare can be very subtle and very simple. Sometimes it's very obvious. I'm using the votive mass for the holy name of Jesus today. We could have used the votive mass for the Holy Eucharist or any other of the votive masses but one of the primary ways to resist the devil is by the holy name of Jesus, by his precious blood, and by Mary in prayers. Not only the name of Mary, the immaculate heart of Mary, but the Hail Mary. So don't be afraid. I have said, and I have said often, but it needs to be clarified. I don't believe in the devil. I believe in Jesus. I have to put up with the devil. But I should also say that I do believe in the devil because the devil, but devil's real. And the devil has a certain amount of power, but he does not have absolute power. Only God does that, has that. The devil at the end of the day and at the beginning is himself weak and afraid. And he can be, can be easily scattered. So do not fear. He talked to different segments of people, and I think there's degrees of truth, but I don't really go down that path, that there's evil everywhere. Is that on the increase? Probably. Different groups, segments, cults, you know, those kinds of people and places, they're around. They are. But the challenge and the invitation is to keep our eyes on Jesus. So many of the people we see for healing and inner healing and deliverance from time to time, they're occupied with things of the devil. They're afraid. The irony is they know very little about Jesus. It's important to know about Jesus, I suppose intellectually, that we understand the mysteries, but it's not because we're smart. To know Jesus is to know him in our hearts, in our souls and to believe the rites and rituals in the church, of the church, in their power. The rite of baptism, which is why I pointed out when Theodora Lou, the last little baby we baptized, I pointed out that the prayer, there's an exorcism prayer in the rite of baptism, obvious. And that prayer is to pray against original sin, Baptism breaks original sin so that we are brought out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. You're a person of light. You're a dwelling place. You're a temple of the Holy Spirit. Stare at that. And even on your hard days, look even harder. Use the name of Jesus. Call upon his precious blood. Say a Hail Mary. Be at peace. I can hardly imagine the warfare that St. Paul put up with the confused life that he lived, and then his profound conversion. The devil hated that, and Paul suffered the consequences in many ways. Consider the warfare that Jesus put up with. Not only the bad behavior that people ployed against him, but the inner agitations. He did have that human nature. 
the agitations, and we can see that in the story of 40 days in the desert. That's why that story exists. That experience exists. It's not just a story. Jesus wasn't some shrinking violet. He was such, such a nice guy. Go tell that fox. Behold, I cast out demons, perform healings. Jesus will not be put off his purpose. He will not be put off his mission. He goes resolutely to Jerusalem. That's the perfection of Jesus. Culturally, socially, in the world, he made mistakes to the point that he was killed. But he was perfect morally, spiritually, and in every way because he brought to completion his role as Christ and Savior. It worked. You and I are going to heaven. But along the way, because as Paul said, it's not only our struggles and trials of personal sin, immorality in times, and all the immorality in the world, and that list is long, as you know. For our struggle is not of flesh and blood, but with uh, principalities, personalities sometimes do, principalities, powers, world rulers in this present darkness. Those are the powers that I'm talking about. But there's the predominant and far surpassing eternal power of the transcendence that is the essence of God. In that, be at peace. Give your fears to God. Give your concerns. When you're agitated, say a prayer. God is always present. Thank you, God, for Jesus Christ.